This week, we joined Lucas at the Motegi Circuit in Japan as he familiarizes himself with the track ahead of his final race weekend of the season. Well, Getchen and the rookies catch up with their sports psychologists. But first, Lucas reflects on his time in Japan so far. Well, with one race to go in Motegi before his debut Super GT season, Lucas Ordines heads to the Shino Gawa Jinja Shinto Shrine to reflect on his season thus far, learning the Japanese culture and way of life is part of his job. Six years ago, I was uh, living in Madrid, uh, looking for a job, and now racing in one of the most important championships in the world. A dream for me since I won GT Academy, for sure it was my main goal to get a, a drive here in, in Japan. Racing the Super GT has been a year of learning and improving. It's been a fantastic year for me, really positive. I really make a huge step in my, in my driving skills, learning uh, new tracks and yeah, one victory, uh, pole position. Well, the season finale in Thailand saw Lucas on top of the Super GT podium. Fantastic moment, I will never forget. We celebrate the big time. All the big bosses, all the mechanics, all the engineers together, enjoying time. And uh, after a very, very tough beginning of the season, we finally got a, a fantastic result. Lucas has also been enjoying the enthusiasm of the Japanese fans. Fans here are something really big. I really fall in love with them. So many, so many fans, but uh, they are so close to us. They follow us to every race. It's something incredible. A racetrack full of spectators bringing me presents, bringing me Japanese sweets and chocolate. We as drivers, uh, you know, we need to thank them all because thanks to them we are, we are uh, making a good show. Japanese language, their food, customs, Lucas has immersed himself in these. The language is, is a big ba uh, barrier for sure to work with in, in a race car team. You work in and you have to communicate and make decisions in a quick way with the engineers, with the teammate, with the mechanics. Not uh, speaking in Japanese, is, it makes everything slower. I'm lucky that my engineer speaks English and uh, Kazuki is helping me a lot, my teammate. Well, Lucas is also enjoying life away from the track in Japan. I really love Unagi. It's a kind of um, eel. All the drivers don't like it, but I really love it. And in Japan, it's a very, very famous and traditional food. The efficiency of the Japanese Nismon team was a shock As a for Spanish Lucas guy, you know, uh, we can, you know, we can delay a meeting or we can uh, wait 10 minutes for someone and nothing happens. But here, if you make someone to wait for you one, one second, one minute, uh, that's too much. I learned a lot to organize my day uh, in a better way with them. But it's quickly made to feel very much at home. At the beginning of the year, all the Nismo family came here to Shinagawa Jinja to, to pray for victory, to pray for safe, safety and, and, and to have a successful year. Hopefully, I can get back on the podium and on the top st step of the podium uh, soon, uh, and hopefully in Japan. This year's GT Academy winners uh, eight weeks through their final development program. And it's not all about racecraft and physical fitness, it's also about psychology. It's help us to learn more about yourself and um, to try to avoid uh, your chimp. It's a part of the brain uh, we want to win at any cost. 
Well, nearing the end of their driver development program, they've learned some vital mental it's management about, skills. Uh, how you react at races or testing or at the fitness. Keep calm uh, yourself and uh, control, uh, control yourself. So-called chimp management is used by gold-winning Olympic stars like Chris Hoy as well as other Tour de France cyclists. There are some bits that need development above and beyond other parts, but actually you'll naturally pick it up as you go and uh, as you experience it. Um, your learning and development is such that it will just naturally sink in and you, you'll do it without realising after a while. Is it a difficult thing at these race weekends then? We know how, you know, the, you racing drivers are on the whole. Your chimp just wants to go quickly and wants to go fast and of course your human comes along and says, well, hang on a minute, no, it's, it's a bit different. Actually, more importantly, we need to be learning and developing. Um, is that something that you notice at these race weekends? Thinking about nature and not going fast, quite sad in the, in the car. They've taken on board the concepts that we're dealing with. They understand it on a fundamental level, which is always the most important thing. But more importantly, they're then going able to, being able to go into sort of the real world setting in their racing environment and put their own plans together with how they're going to sort of change their psych approach to their driving. How do you pick up on things that, um, you know, you're doing well, things that maybe need improvement and developing? Um, and then how do you go and sort of, how are you then sort of putting plans in place for how to develop and improve them? The rookies have individual needs when it comes Each to driver mental driver already has a number of development points that as a team we want them to be working on. Uh, all my teammates are different. We are not all working for the same thing. Uh, me, it's most my attitude uh, when I'm not the fastest or when I'm not winning. Well, Getchin is working to, sir, to contain and control his attitude when things aren't going his way, while Ricardo is working towards being more consistent and not overdriving the car. Now that they have the focus they need and those focus points, they can work on these for 24 hours in Dubai. Well, during Lucas' first Super GC season, he's realised the importance of the track walk to get familiar with the circuit and its surface. Back in Thailand uh, last month, uh, it's good to you know to learn about the, the track surface, about the curves, if they are deep or if they are big or they are flat, that you can carry speed into them. Where you can uh, take the risk into the corner because you have a good runoff or you have tarmac, it gives you an idea of what's going on and to prepare you your mental preparation before going into the into the car. Into the practice session before Lucas' eighth and final race of the season. Lucas and his team meet at the Motegi circuit, but there's no time for a track walk. I like to go do track walks, but unfortunately I couldn't make it this time. However, Lucas does have some prior knowledge of the circuit. You know, Motegi is a new track for me in real life, not in uh, Gran Turismo for sure. Since many years in Gran Turismo, we had the uh, Motegi racetrack and you know, I, I learned it uh, since many years ago. Took his teammate, Kazuki, has ample experience at Motegi and is on hand to build on Lucas' virtual knowledge. Kazuki is always uh, teaching me about uh, any racetrack, about any, any race meeting here in Japan. Hard on brakes, no yeah. entry. Yeah, because uh, down here, here you yeah. cost. We need a lot of yeah. speed, yeah, down the straight. Okay. Uh, maybe second gear through here, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe short shift to third because uh, for turn four, it's nearly flat. With, yeah. Uh, you can make it with the new tires on, but uh, you can lose the rear. Time. No. Yeah. Okay. We also talk about what happened last year in in the strategy and in the during the race in qualifying and as always, you know, talking to me overall about gears and breaking points and references and and traffic situations. Luckily for Lucas, unlike previous circuits, Motegi is generally easy to learn. It's not a very difficult track to, to learn, no? It's all 90 degree corners, not very much technical, it's just uh, heartbreaking as late as you can and having a good exit for, for the next race. But the nature of the track will test the Nismo GTR to its limits. Well, the GTR is really strong in high-speed corners, uh, long straights. We've got really mm, strong Nissan engine. Uh, we've got really good downforce in the GTR for high-speed corners. So 
Uh, what we are missing is uh, more traction and a little bit more uh, weight in the car into the rear. No? The weight distribution is a little bit too far to the front with the front engine. 90 degree corners uh, are not the best for us. So much high temperature on the brakes very quick, so we start to have fat in, in into the brakes uh, really, really early, and that's what makes us to struggle a little bit with the pace. Brake fade means reduced stopping power that occurs due to repeated heavy application of the brakes. It's amplified by high load and high speed. The key issue for the GTR GT3 is heavy frontal weight distribution. This truck doesn't have a tarmac runoff, so if you go off, you go to the gravel and you will, you will make a work a lot for, the, for your mechanics and they will be upset. Lucas has now learned the track as best as possible and will take this knowledge into his final Super GT race. Next time on GT Academy Masterclass, Lucas and his teammate Kazu Kabuki uh, take on the qualifying rounds and the final race of the Super GT season at the Twin Rim Motegi circuit. Lucas works with his engineering team to get the optimal performance from the GTR GT3 and we find out how the two different classes of Super GT add to a race series action. It's going to be good.